Everyone on our computers, which are all math and numbers, can create beautiful graphic artwork such as this. How can you get art from math? One common method is called ray tracing. We can mathematically describe a 3D scene by breaking each object down into the basic shapes that make it up. Each shape can then be represented by a bunch of numbers that define the size and shape. Rendering is the process of taking those numbers and creating a realistic image of the scene. Thus, rendering is basically virtual photography, and ray tracing is one of the most common methods of rendering. The first thing we do in ray tracing is place a virtual camera in our scene, which consists of an origin point, a viewing direction, and a camera plane where the results show up. The camera then sends out rays from its origin through each pixel on the camera plane and into the scene, then calculates where the ray hits an object and finds the color and intensity of the light reflected off that point back toward the camera. But how do we find out how much light is reflected off that point? Enter the rendering equation, the equation that bridges the worlds of mathematics and art. But before we can understand how it works, first we need to understand functions and integrals. A function is basically a number factory. It takes in one or more numbers and spits out a single answer. If we take a number line and plug in each point on the number line into the function and use the output to tell us how high to move each point on the line, then we get a curve whose shape depends on what function we use. Now suppose we want to find the area between the curve and the number line. One way we could do that is by breaking up the area into a bunch of skinny rectangles and adding up their areas. The more rectangles we have, the closer the area of the rectangles is to the actual area under the curve. What integrals do is sum up the area of an infinite number of tiny rectangles to find out the exact area under the curve. So now for the rendering equation. The L for light on the left side of the equation is just a function that spits out the amount of light reflected back off point X in the direction of omega O, which typically points back to the camera. To calculate that, we first look at LE, the light emitted from that point. This will be a large number for lights and zero for most surfaces. Next, we add the light reflected off the point using a special integral. The capital omega represents every direction that light could come from. The integral then splits up that hemisphere into an infinite number of rays and sums up the light coming from each ray. The reason we can't just send a couple of rays toward each light source is that the point will often reflect light that is first bounced off another surface. Then, for each ray the integral sends out, we plug in the new intersection point and the integral ray back into the L function to find out how much light is shining off that point back to the original point. Ideally, this would go on infinitely long. Practically, after several bounces, we just assume no light is coming from that path. The BRDF is where most of the magic happens. Different surfaces reflect light differently. Some reflect light in only one particular direction, and some evenly in every direction. Some are a mix of the two. The BRDF accounts for this to determine what percent of light shining onto the point gets reflected back to the camera. Thus, while the rest of the rendering equation describes how light interacts with the scene, the BRDF takes a scene like this and turns it into a scene like this. Finally, we multiply everything by the cosine of the angle between the integral ray and the direction the surface is facing. That way, light shining directly on the surface will receive full intensity, while light only skimming the surface will receive less intensity. And there we have it, the equation that makes math beautiful.